Today I'm going to discuss about the literature review of Deep Reinforcement Learning and Medical Imaging by Kevin Chua, Wangan Lin Kwa Lu, Nian Bing Nguyen, and Nicholas Ayase. These are the topics I am going to discuss mainly focusing on basics of reinforcement learning, introduction to deep reinforcement learning, and DRL and medical imaging. What is uh, deep reinforcement learning? It is a subset of machine learning called deep learning with added top layer implementation of reinforcement learning. Reinforcement learning is, is kind of a learning process that uses a game theory analogy that it learns through a series of actions by leveling up and getting a reward system. Most of the current applications of DRL have shown impact, big impact on healthcare and medicine field. And it is very useful in learning medical images analysis, particularly for object collision detection, uh, surgical image segmentation, of augmentation, and registrations of significant medical images, and its view plane localization, and it can be also applied to some personalized mobile health intervention. DRL is known as one of the state-of-the-art framework in artificial intelligence. It scales up the intractable problem before and now uh, it learns through a sequential decision process with highly capable learning of delayed supervised information. And it maximizes also the non-differentiable matrix, which are classification and regression metric. And it speed up also the searching detection process for optimal transformation of image registration accuracy. It improves also the memory allocation since the training is only using uh, small images during detection process. This uh, survey paper expanded mostly on some of the state-of-the-art technology. What are the basics of reinforcement learning? Markov decision process is the one of the essential foundation of Reinforcement learning. It is a process whose uh, conditional probability distribution of future states depends upon the present state. The introduction of reward system that depends only on the current state but also it depends on the action that leads to future states. One good example that I can think of it is the famous online game Fortnite. And if you're a gamer, you should know about the Fortnite, but there's a link here I provided so you can check if you're interested. Usually the game chooses an action and played by the rules. And while it receives some actions, and it also produces a reward system, like leveling up. Then the until the player reach the final label of the game, which is called the future states. Basics of reinforcement learning, Markov decision process have five elements. And these are the set of state observation space and set of actions the agents can choose from and the transition probability function reward function and discount factor the main objective of this is to find the the optimal rules 
or best known solution that gives the highest expected cumulative reward called return, which is the weighted sum of immediate rewards. And there are two functions that uh, reinforcement learning is divided and these are model free methods and model based methods the model pre methods is the method uh, about the learning process of a gamer or an agent during the interaction process with other players in the environment to exceed the maximum policy so you're fighting with each other and learning from each other like in the Fortnite. And model-based methods is when the experienced gamer knows such a certain rules or game policy and use it for its own advantage to exceed the maximum policy. And uh, introduction to deep reinforcement learning. Autoencoder is one of the uh, representation for unsupervised learning used for dimensionality reduction and feature selection. Deep Delip Network and Deep Autoencoders are also unsupervised learning used for network initializations while uh, deep autoencoders have one seen input layer and one invisible layer and the deep belief network is mainly based on restricted Boltzmann machines which contains of layered input data and a layered invisible units that gain a knowledge to describe the features that are gathered from the higher order correlations in the data. Multi-layer perception, perceptron, is the neuron simplest form of neural network. Perceptron is a computational single form of neuron that has one or many inputs, main processor and one output. There are two types of neural network, convolutional neural networks, and recurrent neural networks. Convolutional neural networks, or called CNN, is a fully joined uh, multi-layered perceptrons that perform weight sharing during the data processing in a grid-like topology network. While recurrent neural network, or called RNN, is a sequential model that performs the same task for each sequence on which the output depends on the previous task computations. And long short-term memory was born to address the issue of the difficulty of RNN training for long-term dependencies. And this LSTM able to maintain the memory that updates and release its content when it is needed during the training process. Another method was proposed, the gated recurrent unit, to improve the process of the capturing dependencies at different time intervals. The only difference with LSTM, it has no separate memory cells. Uh, model free DRL algorithms, there are three approaches for these algorithms. Value-based DRL methods, policy gradient DRL methods, actor critic DRL methods. I'm about to discuss to you the each of them in the following. And the value-based DRL methods, this is the basic of the Deep reinforcement learning. The Deep Q learning network, DQN, is the popular among the three. 
Uh, this method directly knows the policy knowledge from the higher information or dimension inputs in a deep neural network. And this uses a regression modeling, but with main limitation about the Q values that tends to overestimate because of the max values during the MSE loss, MSE loss computation. And the second one is the double Q and DQN is the improved DQN version that uses double implementation of DQN. It addresses the overestimation of the previous method with its improved estimation, but this is very costly process, although the ECS method. Another improved method is the dueling DQN. It addresses the issue of DQN on its value. Instead of lowering the value, it only remembers the new reward by updating the Q value on the MSE loss computation. It introduces the advantage function. And the last one is the deep recurrent Q network. This addresses the limitation of memory and imperfect information for its decision point and added recurrent neural network on it into DQN by replacing its first DQN fully joined layer. And this is the most famous improvement of DQN by adding one step approximations with the end steps. Now I'm about to discuss about the policy gradient DRL methods. It differs from the value-based DRL methods. It mainly optimizes the gradient objective function. So the gradient objective function was introduced in this methods. And reinforce was introduced by using Monte Carlo estimation to approximately calculate gradient. This method was applied into any uh, parametric problems, however, very costly for convergence for local optima. The naive reinforce variance gradient optimation, uh, estimation was addressed on this one by adding the variance reduction technique not to affect the outcome of expected result. Actor critic DRL algorithm in comparison with the two methods, value-based and policy gradient, policy gradient methods outperform the value-based for its fast and continuous training convergence. But the value-based method are more steadier and exhibit sample efficiency. These two architectures model are fully optimized in actor critic DRL algorithm. The main idea of the actor critic is to divide the model into two parts, namely computing an action based on a state and producing the Q value of the action. The best example of this is like a kid-mother relationship, wherein a kid explores the space environment and the mother watches her kid. And if the kid does not behave in an environment, the mother tells the kid to behave appropriately until the kids knows the rule and understand what is the difference of good and bad behavior and learn the process. Advantage of actor critic A to Z, it has a two neural network, an actor network, policy and a critic network. A synchronous advantage actor critic A to Z is another strategy to implement the actor critic agent to meet the efficiency of memory. Now we're going to discuss about the model-based algorithm. 
Previously, we discussed the model pre-based algorithm. So the model-based algorithm is an experience learned model from a function approximation. Theoretically, this model does not require a base knowledge, but it may help if it has a base knowledge added to help the training process converge faster. Most common model-based approach includes value function and policy search methods. What is value function? Value function, it is used for convolutional neural network to approximate the cube value function in high dimensional space. And the policy search, it directly aims to find the policy by means of gradient, pre or base methods. Introduction to deep reinforcement learning useful techniques to train an agent. Number one is experience replay, based on the experience of a gamer and a useful part in rules policy learning. Number two is a mini batch learning with experience replay and mini batch learning. It allows the training in, in a series of batches that it helps the learning process more robust from the noise. And another technique to train an agent is the target queue network freezing. Two networks are used, one that interacts and generate target queue values to compute losses, and the other plays as a target network and its weights are fixed and updated by the first network. Reward clipping, it is the clipping of the reward to capture the learn process in more scalable way. Now we're on the last part of topic, the most important one, the DRL and medical imaging. Mostly uh, DRL is used in medical imaging analysis and the applications as, as I mentioned before in the introduction in abstract it varies from this field of analysis like landmark detection, image registration, segmentation, object collision localization and classification, view plane localization and plaque tracking, vessel extraction. It's also used in other application like hyperparameter tuning data augmentation, and neural search architecture. And most of them are sharing a non-differentiable optimization for solutions. So basically, it uses only classification metric. DRL for parametric medical image analysis. So this model estimated a low-dimensional image for analysis. As I have mentioned, it uses only a low-dimension image, small images. There are three elements that require to formulate a deep reinforcement learning framework. The first one is the action in which the agent takes the image by moving the sample into the earth para parameter independently in certain value while keeping the other parameters in the same position. And the second one is the state, wherein the state defines an environment of an image at certain points, so at certain centered position. And this, there is another one, the reward, the most important one, when the target signal is hit or closer, the reward function provides a stimuli signal to the agent. And once the three elements are available to the DQL algorithm, they called, was invoked and it was triggered to learn the process. And when the process learned, the Q function loss is calculated using the maximum value. 
Remember the Q function loss here is the MSE loss computation. And using the grid search fashion for path supervision, it maximizes the reward for every iteration process. So it learns for every iteration process using the greedy search. And until it eventually leads to convert the reinforcement learning into a supervised learning model. From there, the learning process of a model using classification or regression function started. The first application I'm going to discuss in GRL and medical imaging is the landmark detection. What is landmark detection? These landmark anatomical structures on the, on the picture that I have shown here, it is an structure of anatom anatomical structures of a body and it plays a very important role in navigating the image samples. It's like uh, in comparison, and when you're traveling, you have a geographical landmarks and map that you use, or you search in maps or Google Maps when you're traveling, so for you to explore the area. It, this is a similar way in landmark detection. So this is used for exploring the image sample and there are a agent that is used for landmark detection they call it as artificial agent so this is the multi-scale approach for detection of anatomical landmarks in three-dimensional space and it exhibits perfect detection with no false positive and negative values. The second one is the supervised action classifier. The image is partitioned, is taken from the path supervision approach or supervised approach. This modeling allow like it has four possible action types that helps to achieve the best accuracy of image detection. I, there is a, a formula that they use, like the up, right, down, left formula that I pasted here. And they took samples from the cardiac arrest or obstetric ultrasound image into dataset and they use this supervised action classifier and it shows the best result accuracy of image detection. Another DRL in medical imaging is image registration. For comparison in different times and uh, modalities, robust image registration in medical imaging is needed. So it uses with the time intervals and modalities. There are two ways to use for this modeling. There is the rigid registration. So the deep convolutional neural network utilizes the path supervision method to end-to-end -end training. And it is evaluated into two data sets, spine, uh, images with the 87 pairs and the heart with 97 pairs of images. This artificial agent outperforms the state-of-the-art methods with big margin in terms of accuracy and robustness. And the updated model for this rigid reg registration is using the dueling DQN. By learning the Q function instead of path supervision was introduced to previous method achieves the state of the art when compared with another model. 
registration it is a non rigid registrations that comes from pool picture when the rigid registration performs an efficient transformation between two images image registration is a non-rigid registration it studies the mostly the parametric statistical deformed pair images for an organ centered MR registered prostate images resulted to better performance when compared to the other state-of-the-art models they got the uh, median dice coefficients of 0.96 for 2D and 0.88 in 3D. And they confirm the Q function is learning from this study. And this was also concluded when tested with other image registration samples using the prostate MR data 41 3D images using eight testing samples and it results to 56 inter-subject image pairs. Both results are better compared with the other state-of-the-art registration model. Now we go to object lesion localization and detection. Uh, studies were also concluded for this model for using uh, breast sample images from DCE MRI or they call it dynamic contrast enhanced magnetic resonance imaging machine they use the uh, bounding box and with its actions like in the picture together with the signal reward function and the deep Q learning network or DQN is used on these samples based on ResNet architecture. Samples were taken from, as I mentioned, with the breast images from 117 patients with training set 58 patients, annotated 72 lesions, and Testing set from 59 patients with 69 annotated lesions. Accuracy uh, shows uh, similar results with state-of-the-art but with big impact on speed with time reduced detection. Another study also took the challenges of big computational is to pathological images of breast cancer classification. Usually, the pathologist uh, selects the abnormal area of the breast and study its details. Such a mechanism captures the attention to improve the DRL selection and classification of abnormal breast region. So, DRL was used for the two tests, one for selection and the other one for classification. They improved this pathological process using DRL and selection is training the certain area of image. The image selected is used for classification. This model achieved its 98% accuracy while consuming only 50% of the old pathological method, the attention-based approach. So it reduced the selection process to 50 percent the next one is a view plane localization this new method proposed for detection of canonical view in cardiac and MR brain images so this study shows uh, mostly used the DQN, DDQN, dual DQN, and dual DDQN. And a 3D plane is parameterized, parameterized in 4D vector. 
I have shown the figure on the top with the sign reward function and action steps course to find selection. Similarly, other method added the image of augmentation for this proposed method starting from one for better initialization with active module termination. This added approach the image augmentation on view plane localization improves the efficiency and accuracy of plane localization based on the in-house datasets of the 430 prenatal 3D ultrasound volume of fetal head. And what is a plaque tracking? Plaque is one kind of a serious problem, health serious problems. And it is also explored by the DRL. So as we know, plaque is like a, a kind of a cholesterol pot composed or developed. And this uh, buildup can lead to a serious health problems or even death. I have shown the picture of samples of what is the plaque is. But still, uh, this proposal is having some challenges due to various intravascular morphology. Another method they are trying to explore are the vessel center line extraction. DRL using navigation model tracing the vessel center line. A point to core measure is defined in two terms. A false agent position towards the true center level. This one. And the agent is forced towards the direction of a corp. This method achieves good performance compared with the 3D CNN supervised learning. And they updated the method using DDQN with 3D CNN to improve the centerline accuracy with a speed of second, 7 seconds of inference. Another one is solving optimization using DRL. DRL is known to handle non-differentiable matrix. Therefore, it is mostly used for optimizations, for tuning hyperparameter, image augmentation, image classification, and searching neural network for augmentation. Image classification. A CNN model integrated the question and answering RL based method, where the deep neural network agent asked the patient about the skin disease symptoms using the CNN visual information and answers. And the DNN agent learned from this method based on the question and answering the patient. Uh, this approach improves the classification accuracy greater than 20% compared with the CNN using only visualization. And it shortened the diagnosis in average time compared to decision tree based QA approach. Image segmentation is assigning level to pixels in finding the perfect boundaries of the anatomical structure of medical image. And this method realizes the object image segmentation. And it's mostly used for pre-processing. However, uh, this method is intractable in size and not yet utilized to meet the clinical requirements for 3D image segmentation. 
Another proposal that used for image segmentation is the state-of-the-art NAS or Neural Architectural Search. It improves the image search automation for a special application. However, it is also not used often in medical image segmentation. Image acquisition and reconstructions. Uh, CT metal artifacts, when you do the CT scan, some of the metal artifacts affects the clinical decision making because of the image inconsistency. So using the iterative CT reconstructions, it helps to solve the optimization issue and medical images. So these are the samples of images that is used for evaluation. Radiotherapy planning is also uh, the DRL leverage. The use of DRL is leverage in radiotherapy planning. It takes the uh, histogram as an input and outputs the adjusted weight with its reward function, sparing the organs at rest. What it means is when they do rigid therapy, some patients are exposed. So they use this method to spare the organs of the patient for being at rest. So this method uh, proposed improve the rigid therapy planning with yields of quality score 10.7% higher than a human radiotherapy planner. Some of the miscellaneous topics are still for exploration, not related to medical images analysis, but mostly it uses uh, base reinforcement learning. And these are video summarization, surgical gesture segmentation and classification, personalized mobile health intervention, computational model personalization. DRL is powerful model in medical imaging analysis from what we have seen. And it is successfully applied in various applications and uh, image landmark localization, object detection, image registration, and image-based inferencing. And demonstrated some effectiveness in tuning parameter, optimization, image augmentation, selection, and neural architectural searching. Although some of the methods are not fully utilized in clinical requirements. The current DRL surpassed my expectation. And I believe it still needs some further exploration and medical imaging classification.